Yo, 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 what's up again today? I am back once again. Uh, today, um, we're going to be talking about the whole continent of Africa. Um, you know, uh, we're going to talk about today the whole continent, and I want to really stress this uh, more than anything to everybody, uh, especially to maybe the new generation that's coming up, or maybe even the current generation and my generation, or even the future generation that lives uh, abroad in the African diaspora, uh, wherever you're at in the world, or that lives in Africa and, um, you know, sees this and, uh, uh, you know, just um, doesn't know what to invest their money with or doesn't know what, what path to go on. So today we'll be talking about Africa and why it's so important for us as Africans in the world, whether wherever you're at in the world, for us to own our natural resources back in Africa. Um, today we're going to learn about it a little bit. So we're going to I'm going to give you a little info, and then we're I'm sort of going to try to give my best scenario, even though it's not the easiest thing to do. But what my best scenario is for the continent of Africa and the betterment of Black people all around the world, and what we should do and how we could uh, maybe accomplish it, even though it's easier said than done. I understand that. So I don't want nobody to get you know like, man, it's it's easy to sit back and say that back there. I was like, yeah, I understand that but it's all about progressing in like trying to have a think tank and to solve the problem. So Africa has the largest quantity of natural resources including diamonds, salt, gold, iron, cobalt, uh, you know, uranium, copper, silver, petroleum, cocoa beans, and also just, uh, you know, like um, uh, woods, you know, like lumber and tropical fruits. And, you know, much of its natural resources are undiscovered and barely harnessed at all, you know, having a very, very like low human density in, in, in you know, what is Africa as the continent for a very, very, you know, long time, you know, Africa has been colonized by different groups of, you know, people, whether it be Europeans, Arabs, um, you know, other groups that have exploited African resources. So there are a lot of economics uh, that right now, like around the world, that have been talking about raw materials and, you know, the large quantities of raw materials that, you know, are in Africa and under, you know, Africa, basically in a lot of their leaders, even though a lot of African leaders are puppets, they're European puppets and they're just world puppets and they get on my nerves because, you know, they need to stand up and be strong like Thomas and Kira and other presidents that were doing things for the African nation. Uh, so, you know, but, um, you know, like I said, the, the, the pressure and tension uh, is just very, very heavy um, as far as like natural resources, even though there's abundance of them in Africa. And, you know, this kind of like tension usually leads to, to war and, you know, slow development. So the African people um, and even the people in the, the diaspora like me that maybe want to, um, you know, go home and, um, um, you know, open a business or to own natural resources it's very hard and you have to go about it a certain way and we can't uh prosper we don't have um, um you know i don't feel like we, we need to have our own bank we need to have a, a african bank you know and, uh, just like how there's the world bank in europe just like how there's about to be the asian bank um you know in asia uh where the india the middle you know middle eastern countries in asia are trying to join um you know we need that so there's a lot of war that leads to that uh whether it be domestically in africa you know as far as like different kind of rebels and things like that and there's a lot of side stories behind that you know uh different organizations from different countries you know fund war so uh, basically black people can kill each other and then they run in and take the resources and they give them a little bit of money and you know or actually from other countries just coming in from outside of africa and just taking what they want and as you know the european colonization um you know in the uh 13, 14, 1500s, and you know, obviously you know the story, or I hope you know the story. If you don't, you should know the story, because if you live on the continent or you don't, you were affected, um, you know, other than uh, uh, one country, which was still even affected. So, um, you know, even with the natural abundant, abundance of natural resources in Africa, you know, Western countries like United States, Canada, France, uh, the United Kingdom, especially them, um, and, and as well as China now, especially, um, you know, of, often they exploit African natural resources, especially today. And, you know, it's causing most of the value and money from natural resources to go to the West and to East Asia rather than Africa. Um, you know, and this sort of kind of fuels, you know, further causing of, of, of poverty in, in, in some African countries, uh, not all of Africa, but some African countries. And actually, even the African countries that are doing better off could be doing even even better if uh, the natural resources, uh, more so uh, natural resources in their country were owned by them. And I, you know, if you don't understand history, it's just a snowball effect of, of colonization of Africa that has put, you know, the motherland in this state, unfortunately. Um, but if we look at oil, which is, I don't know how long oil will be the most dependent 
uh, natural resources in the world for the most part, um, as far as like just on a global scale. But as far as we know right now, like African oil is is definitely important to the world. People don't understand. They think the Middle East, Middle East, in the Middle East, oil is very important. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, the African oil is very important, and this was mainly due to the crisis in 2000, oil crisis in 2003, um, and you know, basically with the recent discoveries of uh, of, of, um, of oil, you know, oil reserves uh, in Sudan and Nigeria, uh, and these are the two biggest uh, or major, you know, two uh, uh, oil producers, and China owns 40% of Sudan's oil production. We can't have that. We need to. We need to have Sudan owning a hundred percent of their oil production. Um, and 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 even if this is in the future, this is is what's needed. There's there's no need. We should produce uh, and and be able to have the, the the equipment and the materials to produce. You know, oil from the, from its raw state all the way to a you know refined state or whichever way to put in cars to use in uh, gasoline, whatever it might be. So um, you know, oil is provided by you know both. Uh, continental and offshore production so on land in Sudan and off you know in the ocean uh, uh, Sudan uh, you know is can produce oil and Sudan's oil export in 2010 was estimated nine billion dollars in, 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 in you know Western or United States money nine billion dollars nine billion dollars so we have to understand that we have the resources we just need to harness them we need to um, protect them we need to make sure that uh, other countries are not exploiting uh, us for that um, because uh, sometimes i feel like especially in the motherland and even in america it happens like that a lot of times with african americans is that we feel like we'd rather take something than nothing to help our people right away and i do understand that method but at the end of the day i feel like sometimes we have to struggle sometimes we have to struggle and just struggle to own all our stuff and you know five years ten years fifty years a hundred years from now the next generation won't have to go through that and you know things can get better rapidly so the five countries that dominate the oil production at this moment um, make up 85% of the continent's oil production. So 85% of Africa is using, uh, um, or when they do use African oil, is using these top five countries, which is Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, and Angola. And um, you know, other oil producing countries are Gabon, Gabon, I always said that one wrong, Gabon, uh, Congo, Cameroon, uh, you know, Tuzania, uh, um, you know, Guinea, um, in the Dominic, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, the Ivory Coast. So the exp you know, the exploration is, is taking place in a number of other countries uh, that aim to increase their output or become, you know, first time producers. And, you know, this includes countries that are trying to produce, you know, shortly, uh, Chad, Sudan, uh, Namibia, uh, South Africa, Madagascar, and um, you know, also uh, Mozambique and Tanzania are, are you know potential oil producers. Um, so we have to understand that a lot of the Western countries, a lot of the um, you know the Western countries, the Eastern countries, uh, Asia and stuff like that, they're, they're running out of metals and running out of some natural resources. And you know, the metals in Africa are, uh, are extremely important, more so nowadays, especially to the world, um, as the you know the different continents are facing you know depletion of their resources. And the Copper Belt in uh, Katanga and the Democratic Republic of uh, I'm sorry, the Democratic Republic of Congo um, and the diamond mines in Sierra Leone, Angola, and Botswana are well known for having their abundance of, of, of rich uh, produce of materials and diamonds and copper and just you go down the list and some like in the Congo some materials that can only be found in the Congo that the whole world uses uh, and I want to say that's cobalt cobalt and so yes um, this is the things that we have to understand of why Africa is in the state it's in let's 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 say it like this Africa's in the state it's in is because of three things in my opinion and you guys can beg to differ I know a lot of people are but I'm just gonna put it you know how I feel about it and, and just black people in the world in our state and what you know we need to do the first thing is because a whole continent was colonized in the last thousand years um, First, we have to understand Africa is a whole continent, okay? So, if whoever doesn't know that Africa is a continent, it's a continent. There's, you know, 50 something odd countries in Africa. 54 could be more uh, sooner or later. You never know. So much just uh, disagreement on things, obviously, because of colonization and just people just think different and it's a combination of things. So, Africa 
right back to what I was saying. Africa, for one, is a continent. It has many diverse people, many diverse ethnic groups, and everybody's obviously not going to get along. Just like every continent is not going to get along. Europe, Europeans didn't get along back in the day. They had their fighting, killing, famines. Everybody did. Um, in America, they had it. Uh, in Asia, they had it. In India, they had it. So that's something that everybody needs to put to rest. Africa is not just one continent that is always constantly bickering with each other or at war with each other or, you know, um, people just can't get along. Dead that noise. I don't want to hear that no more. Two, after colonization of Africa and the diversity of Africa, which all played into the colonization of Africa, um, you know, everybody doesn't disagree while other people from different continents are coming in and obviously don't care if you disagree or not. And they're trying to make sure you both don't disagree so they can take over. That's one. Two, and this really makes me mad. The weak, weak, weak presidents, a lot of weak presidents in Africa that are still brainwashed and or greedy. Uh, they're brainwashed and they're scared. I don't want to say brainwashed, some aren't, but some are just scared. Some are brainwashed to think that uh, the European puppets are basically, you know, going to take care of them. You know, I'll give you a steak dinner, I'll give you a bins as long as you keep your people oppressed. Those are, those are the weak brothers and sisters, or, you know, whoever are there that are doing that. Two is the presidents that might necessarily want to do better for the people, but they are just being, you know, they're just being pushed against the wall by uh, their former colonies, you know, the, the former colonization countries to where economically they own them, you know, politically they own them. Uh, uh, resources that are in their own country, the foreign countries that were colonizers own them, or most of them, or a lot of them. So that's the second thing. And the third thing problem is is that um, we have people that don't care, don't know. Uh, obviously, every race has evil people. So in Africa, there is still some e people that are evil that just don't care and know the state of Africa, and they feel like it's never going to get better, or they just don't care if it does or not. And they're 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 um, well, how, what's the word for this I can use? You know, they're all about themselves. You know, everybody in the whole world has this, in America especially. Um, you know, everybody's out to get what they want um, in every country. You know what I'm saying? So we have to, these are the three things that we have to understand that there's just bad and good people for the last third thing everywhere. So you have rebels and people that are just doing uh, uh, bad things because they just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Or they just feel like it's never going to get better. So they're just doing and looking out for themselves, which is pretty much everybody in the world for the most part. But they try to play like they're not so anyway it's just not on a, a, a mass uh, a group level like like some uh, places you know in the motherland so those three things now to me what I think that needs to be done so we can own our own natural resources is first we must have strong leaders that slowly even if it's not by force because you know we just don't have we don't have the unity that we need right now we don't have the the the, the guns and the the military and everything that we natural resources back and we don't have that but it's stepping stones and i understand why we don't have that and you should understand why we don't have that but it's stepping stones so first thing we need to do is have strong leaders we have to administer uh um strong leaders anybody that's a strong leader you know some people think that some radicals are, are bad but to me, in my eyes whoever gets the job done without being radical and strong people is what is needed, you know? Um, so regardless of the radical or not, whichever way approach, because I know some people are very passive, but I don't think we need to be passive anymore, to be honest. But um, some people, uh, um, or some people feel that they need passive or they need to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, militant or maybe, you know, whichever way it gets the job done. So first we need to get strong leaders in there to get the job done that understand that we need to kick out the the, the European influence, the, 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 the um, the Asian influence, the Western, you know, all the Western influence, the Middle Eastern influence. And we have to understand that we can do business with other countries. I'm not, don't mistake me for saying that we can't do business, but we don't need people exploiting us. We don't need people stealing from us or giving us side deals or giving us tax deals like a lot of the big countries do to the poor countries to where they will lend you uh, whatever. Let's say, for instance, let's just talk small, but let's say they lend you, you know, uh, $500 million and you end up paying back a billion dollars through tax, you know, different country like tax you know uh, uh, laws and things when you have to pay money back or you have to pay it back with your natural resources and things like this so we need strong leaders first to take over the country and to understand that we can produce things ourselves second we need is to administer uh, good schools um, with good education uh, good heritage um, 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 information on who you are where you come from 
the different ethnic groups in that country and be prideful of it. So people will want to uh, 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 buy, you know, African things, African brands, things like that, or black brands around the world. And the third thing we need to do after that is we need to learn how to excavate and to, um, 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 you know, produce almost everything that we have in the African countries or even in the diasporas, wherever you're at. Um, you know, whether it be an off African country like Jamaica or Haiti or whatever, we need to do those three things. If we can do those three things, then the natural resources in Africa, we can be a very abundant continent uh, and the diaspora can probably actually, um, you know, benefit from that. Because if we have something like if we had a real, Af a real African Union, I like, I like to call it a real African Union because a lot of people in there are puppets. But if we had a real African Union and uh, we needed aid, Haiti could go or Jamaica could go or you know, Barbados could go to Africa and say, hey, we need a loan from the African World Bank or we need a loan from this country or we need aid from this country. So those are my three things that I think we need to do. We definitely need to own our African natural resources. Don't get me wrong. Some countries are doing very, very well. So don't get me wrong. They're, they're progressing. And when they progress, it's it's coming. I can see it. But I'm just saying that as a continent, we need to understand. And as in the diaspora, Africans in the diaspora, as far as um, uh, investing money into owning oil fields and oil owning you know cocoa uh, um, um, uh, bean fields if you can go to the government somehow and try to find out how that's possible and for anybody that's entrepreneur starting up businesses in Africa to produce certain things that would uh, would definitely help out so hey that was my little bit of rant I had a little bit of rant today because I just wanted to get that all out but that was my little bit of rant today as always I hope you guys um, subscribe um, you know I'm only one person I try to do best I can even though I talk about a lot of things I can't do everything I can't even do any you know uh, um, everything that I that I talk about I'm only one person but it's all about sharing information for that right person that can do these things and even I'm trying to do administer you know uh, things uh, into my life to, to get to the point to where I can help and, and can do other things but spreading the message the messenger is always important and that's who I am so as always um, one love uh, peace and blessings and be safe and I'll let you next time. Peace.